Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. In Diaries today, we got a quick reverse engineering and Python lesson from Didier. Didier found a sort of interesting malicious link file on Malware Bazaar. This file used a slightly unusual obfuscation technique in that it was reversing the URLs it was accessing, but two characters at a time instead, the more common one character at a time. So Didier is going through a quick uh, Python way of reversing this obfuscation and extracting relevant URLs. Well, and after having a fairly embarrassing and dangerous flaw in the Google uh, snipping tool for Android, well, we have now pretty much the exact same flaw also in the Windows 11 snipping tool. And just a few days now after we had this uh, big vulnerability in the uh, Google snipping tool for Android. It now turns out that the Windows 11 snipping tool, a very similar tool that allows you uh, to basically crop images has pretty much the exact same vulnerability. And the problem appears to be very similar. If you're cropping an image and then save the cropped image, it doesn't create a brand new file. Instead, it overwrites the old file and since the cropped image is now smaller, it only overwrites part of the file and leaves the remainder of the file intact, which is still the original data before it had been cropped. There is a marker at the end of PNG images called iEnt uh, that basically tells the image display software to ignore any data after this marker. So if you open this new image now in standard image display software, the cropped data will not be displayed, but the data is still in the file and can be recovered. JPEG file also appear to be affected by this particular issue. So it's not just a PNG. Uh, similar issues here. Now, how much of the data is actually then recoverable it depends on sort of the exact type of PNG or JPEG file that was saved. And of course, the data that's still recoverable at the end of the file may actually part of the cropped image as well. So it's not always that you see data that was removed from the image. That really depends exactly on what you removed and how the data was then saved to the file. Now the proof of concept website uh, and Cropolis, I think uh, they uh, called uh, that particular flaw does not work for the Windows 11 version of the flaw, but the basic principle is the same. And apparently there is some Python code available that as again, in some cases at least, is able to recover some of the cropped image. And .NET developers, be aware that you're subject to just the same techniques that are used to attack Python and JavaScript developers. JFrog is reporting that they found malicious packages on NuGet. Now, the technique being used here is that the attacker is including malicious init.ps1 scripts. Init.ps1 scripts uh, deprecated but still honored by Visual Studio, as JFrog points out, are essentially scripts that are running without any warning whenever you are installing a NuGet package. As so often, these packages are named to be enticing to developers. The one that has uh, 121,000 downloads here is uh, called Coinbase.core and as owner, it uses a Binance official. These packages have now been removed. If you want to look for more in case of compromise and what these packages exactly do to your developers, well, uh, take a look at the JFrog blog. And then we got a couple of miscellaneous updates. A Microsoft uh, published knowledge base article stating that uh, Microsoft Defender antivirus triggered some warning telling you that the local security authority protection is off. This has been fixed with an update. Apparently over the weekend and Monday, a lot of users reported seeing uh, these warnings. 
Secondly, we do have uh, two vulnerabilities being patched in the spring framework. One is a high severity vulnerability, CVE 2023-2860. It does affect a particular security bypass if you're using double wildcard patterns. So only uh, with very specific configurations, you may be uh, vulnerable here. The second vulnerability is a denial of service of vulnerability. And finally, we also have a remote code execution vulnerability that affects Snappy. Snappy is a PHP library, 11 million downloads. It essentially allows you to sort of create PDFs and such from HTML pages and URLs. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.